What's up guys, I just got back from watching Doctor Strange and damn this movie is dope. Let me tell you, best visual effects I have ever seen in the film to date. You have never seen anything like this in any other comic book film or any other film in general. Wow. Um, now, you could definitely tell that they were inspired by films like The Matrix and Inception, but they kind of took things that were done in those movies and just multiply it by a thousand, and it was just a glorious sight to see on the big screen for the first time. Also, might I add, the best use of time reversal in a comic book film since the original Superman with Christopher Reeve. Remember that scene where Christopher Reeve was flying around the Earth trying to save Lois Lane by uh, rewinding time? Well, there is a time reversal scene in Doctor Strange, but it's awesome because it's done by magic and there's other stuff going on in that scene and it's just so damn epic. So we have Benedict Cumberbatch who plays Dr. Stephen Strange and he kind of plays like a uh, lovable asshole if you will with a big ego similar to a, another Marvel character who wears suits of iron hint hint but anyways he can pretty much do miraculous things with his hands because he's a like top-notch professional doctor who can just perform miracles pretty much so he ends up getting into a car accident, which then damages his hands, and he tries to find all these different ways to heal his hands so he could carry on with his profession in life as a doctor. And this leads him, up, like, halfway across the world to a group of people with uh, my mystical powers, with special abilities, with magical abilities, and these people are led by the Ancient One, Played by Tilda Swinton. Now, God bless Tilda Swinton. I thought she did an excellent job as the Ancient One. Um, I know she's been getting a lot of backlash due to the whole whitewashing thing in Hollywood because if I'm not mistaken, the Ancient One is an Asian in the comic books. But for the movie, they casted a uh, Caucasian female. And on um, um, I gotta say, I was perfectly fine with it after seeing her role in Doctor Strange. Uh, she was definitely one of the highlights for me in Doctor Strange. Um, just some of the stuff that she does. I mean, holy shit. She does like some Mortal Kombat crazy shit on the side of buildings with like magic. And it's just insane. You just gotta see this chicken action. It's awesome. Also, we have another character who assists the Ancient One in training Dr. Stephen Strange, who goes by the name of Mordo, played by Chieto Eliafor. Now, he did a great job playing Mordo, but uh, they did change him up a bit for the film. I believe his comic book counterpart is a bit different, and he's evil in the comics, if I'm not mistaken. However, later on in the film, they do give you a clear idea of which path he's heading down towards to, I guess, resemble his comic book counterpart a lot more in future films. Uh, we have the actress Rachel McAdams, who plays Christine Palmer. Uh, Christine is somewhat of a love interest for Dr. Stephen Strange, and I think she was only shown mostly in the beginning and in the middle of the movie. She didn't really have a lot of scenes, because, of course, the film mainly focused on... Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch character, which is Doctor Strange, but some of the parts that she had was uh, lighthearted and funny, however some other parts was kind of emotional just some of the dialogue that was exchanged between her and Stephen Strange um, Benedict Wong and it's funny, we have two Benedicts in this movie, Benedict Cumberbatch and Benedict Wong who plays Wong surprisingly, <laughs> uh, he's sort of like the bookkeeper or um uh, watcher over the book of spells and he's sort of like a strong uh, stern character who never cracks a smile until later on in the film uh, you'll see what I mean once you see the film but most of his parts were pretty good I like his role in the film and I believe most of his interaction with Doctor Strange was just straight up comic relief but he was good and we have Mads Mikkelsen who plays the villain Caecilius now, Caecilius was a unique and different type of villain, but I deeply feel they did follow the typical Marvel formula when it comes to these villains. 
And correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like every movie Mad Mickelson stars in, he's always playing a villain. I don't know, that just seems odd to me. But anyways, Cassilius was pretty cool. However, I deeply feel that they were just following the typical Marvel formula of movie villains. Um, but, you know, he was just a, so, somewhat of a lackey to the main villain, which is Dormammu, who is the supreme ruler of the Dark Realm. And I can't remember what Cassilius' plans was in the first place. I think he wanted to warp reality into the Dark Realm... I don't know, but we do get to see Dormammu, who is somewhat of uh, the main villain in the comics for Doctor Strange, and he was 100% CGI, which is fine, because that's the only way they could pretty much do Dormammu. Uh, however, I felt like they could have done a little bit better, a little bit more creative with the CGI. I mean, I don't know. I would not say the CGI for Dormammu was top-notch. It was something very obvious and something like right out of a video game. But you know what? There was so much positive going on with this movie and this movie was so entertaining and just goes along so fast that I could easily overlook the fact that this giant CGI character was actually confronting Doctor Strange at some point during the film. And that's all I'm saying about that. I don't want to get into how awesome that whole scene was. Um, I'd rather you go see the film yourself. I don't want to say Doctor Strange defeats him, but I will say he does something very clever and something creative I've never seen before in a comic book film. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about Doctor Strange. Uh, this movie was fun and entertaining, but you know what? I could pretty much say the same for every other Marvel film I see. They're always fun and entertaining for me, way more so than the current DC films. Um, I was fine with DC movies up until Batman v Superman. That movie kind of triggered me. And same with Suicide Squad. I thought that movie was going to be fun. It was fun up to a certain point, and then it kind of triggered me, and I was like, no, 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 this is not the way to do it. Uh, I don't know. They've been disappointing me, unlike with Marvel. Um, and I, I do have respect for DC. Don't get me wrong. You know, I grew up with them. I read their comics growing up in my childhood into my adult years. But their live action movies and growing up with the Christopher Reeve movies, growing up with the uh, Michael Keaton movies, and yes, even the bad ones with Val Kilmer and George Clooney. <laughs> Uh, growing up with uh, watching, oh, what was it, Superman Returns, and then we have Man of Steel, we had the Dark Knight movies, all that was fine, all that was fine with me, but Batman v Superman was not for some reason, I felt they could have done better, and same with Suicide Squad, uh, I, don't, I don't know how Justice League is going to turn out, I, I really don't know, the whole thing that, blah, <laughs> I don't know. If they would have gotten a different director, maybe. I, I don't know how I feel about Zack Snyder being in, in the director seat. Uh, I would say the only DC movies I'm looking forward to the most is Batman, because that's being directed by Ben Affleck. Um, I don't know if he's going to work with Zack Snyder on that. I don't know, but I would trust Z Bruce... Uh, I almost said Bruce Wayne. <laughs> uh, I would trust Ben Affleck more than Zack Snyder. Uh, and Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman trailer looks pretty good. I mean, I hope that's not a huge letdown. But as for Justice League, I, I don't know. I really don't know. So I say bring on the next Marvel movie. We got Thor Ragnarok, where he's going to team up with the Incredible Hulk. That's going to be so damn epic to see. We got Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I can't wait for that. I love the first one. Um, Spider-Man, which is going to be produced by Sony Pictures once again, be even after their whole negotiation with Marvel to put him in Civil War, but for his individual movies, they're going to be Sony. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, another Spider-Man reboot. Yay. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Maybe they could get it right this time and get friggin' Green Goblin right. How, how come they can't get Green Goblin right? What's up with that? I mean, I mean the original one with, uh, uh, was it Tobey Maguire? They got that one somewhat right, even though it was like a full-on 
armored suit he had, but still, it resembled Green Goblin a lot more from the comics than any of the other Green Goblins they had. <laughs> oh man, ugh. Well, bring on more reboots, I say. Yay.